It is week 17, guys. It is the final, final week of the NFL regular season. And the Giants and Cowboys face off at MetLife Stadium with incredible playoff implications on the line. It didn't happen the way we wanted it to. The Giants certainly haven't really, you know, deserved this playoff spot, but I could really argue that for literally any team in the NFC East, you know, to be in this position right now. The three teams that are in the position, of course, are Washington, New York, and Dallas. And in order for us to make it in, we got to take care of our own business, beat Dallas, and then we got to pray for Washington to lose against Philadelphia, which... Well, it's, it's going to be a lot to ask for, right? But we got to take care of our own business. This is essentially its own playoff game. This is essentially a playoff game between two division opponents before the playoffs start. You know what this reminds me of? This reminds me of 2011. Also, Giants versus Cowboys Week 17. The winner, this was a bit simpler. I think it was basically a win and in deal. The winner of that game became the NFC's champions and went in to the playoffs. Eli Manning went in there through what three four touchdowns closed out the game and won us the game won us the season You know what I'm saying and guess what happened in 2011 after Eli got us into the playoffs He carried us throughout the playoffs and then beat the Patriots in the Super Bowl and we won our Super Bowl So I, I'm not saying that's what's gonna happen Because <laughs> I don't think this team is anywhere near that and Daniel Jones right now is definitely not anywhere near 2011 Eli Manning like 2011 Eli Manning doesn't get enough respect that man carried that team by himself he was an mvp level quarterback that year by far his best year in the nfl but what we are gonna need is a similar type of game uh from this giants team you know from the defense from the offense from the quarterback we're gonna need a lot of things to go right and we're gonna need to take care of our own business man because this is essentially a playoff game before the playoffs and even if we win and Washington stills wins and we don't get into the playoffs, that's fine. Because you know what? I want to beat the Cowboys. At the end of the day, I just want to beat the Cowboys. It's been four long years. That's how long it's been since we've beat the Cowboys. Just like it was with the Eagles and we finally beat them this year. Same thing, man. The Cowboys time, it's coming. It's coming, man. You talk about four years of them just straight sweeping us every year. Terrible. It's time for us to beat the Cowboys, man. That's what I want at the end of the day, even if we don't make it into the playoffs. Just beat the Dallas Cowboys, man. Hey, when it comes to a game like this, I, even though I am still going to provide you guys with the stats because, you know, that's just what I do, the stats really don't matter because what this is going to come down, come down to, it's going to be coming down to which team wants it more, which team wants the chance to go into the playoffs more, which team is hungrier, and which team plays better, more disciplined football out there. That's what it's going to come down to at the end of the day. And I fully expect the Giants to want this. And I fully expect them to play disciplined football. All the mistakes we've been making the past three weeks, they better go out the window. But let's talk about it, man. Let's get into it. So first off, I'm going to cover our offense against their defense. And this is going to be a short one because as usual, as it's been for like 90% of the NFL season, the real battle is between our defense and the opposing team's offense. So, but first let me cover our offense. Now, Daniel Jones, bro, like I said, you're not near Eli right now in 2011, but just have a good game. And you had a good game last week. You know what I'm saying? 250 yards passing, one touchdown. Could have been better, could have been multiple touchdowns. That's where Jason Garrett comes in. Garrett, do us a favor and call a good game. Call a game like you called against Tampa Bay week eight, which was to this day, still the most perfectly executed offensive plan that will not execute the most perfectly called offensive plan that i saw from you all year it just so happened that it wasn't executed because dj was terrible that game dj please be on point and, and we have yet to see a game in all 16 weeks of football that we've seen from the giants we have yet to see a game where the offense is clicking the defense is clicking the special teams is clicking and Daniel Jones is clicking all at the same time. It's usually the defense is clicking, but everything else is off, or the offense is clicking and the special teams is clicking and then the other two are off. It's never at the same time and that's why we're at the record that we're at and we're in the position that we're in right now. So, Daniel Jones, did what you did last week. Cause you had a good game last week against the Ravens. I liked what I saw from you last week against the Ravens. You made good throws, good decisions, you fit the ball into tight windows, and you weren't trying, you know, you weren't trying to play a hero ball and you weren't turning the football over. I like that. 
if you can use your legs do so because i'm still not sure whether or not that's like a whole you know you and, and and joe judge got together and are playing chess or something you know you told the media oh i'm not fully healthy yet so i won't be able to use my legs if you truly did that without any type of plan that, that was kind of stupid but if you're trying to fool the cowboys so that they won't prepare for that then i mean go ahead and you know cash them off guard run for a 40 yard touchdown i'm down for that but don't don't strain anything because you're coming off of two leg injuries on both of your legs so you know don't injure yourself and Jason Garrett, please, please mix up the routes. And please do not forget about Wayne Gallman. The two most important offensive players this game is going to be DJ and Wayne Gallman. Gallman, had, after having like a six-game stretch of 100 yards, and, you know, sufficient carries, has had like nine carries a game. It's just been terrible. He's still been running the ball well. It's just that Garrett is not continuing to give him the ball. Establish the run, Jason Garrett. Establish the run. Get Wayne Goldman going and get Daniel Jones going with some good play calling. That's my only thing for this Giants offense, right? And, and it shouldn't be too hard considering that we're still going up against a really bad Dallas defense. It's still 30th overall in the league. A Dallas defense that against the run is actually 32nd in the league. So it shouldn't be too hard establishing the run against that when we've been up against top five rushing defenses in the league. The only good part is Dallas defense is their passing defense which somehow is 11th but guess what we beat we swept the washington football team who are currently third in the league in passing defense and at one point was number one so offense if you fail it's going to be completely on you it's not going to be because this dallas defense holds you down now let's get into the real part here our defense and dallas's offense now first off michael gallup i the dallas cowboys have three great receivers man amari cooper uh, you know, C.D. Lamb, the rookie, and Michael Gallup. Amari Cooper last time was shut down by the best cornerback in the league, James Bradbury. I fully expect James Bradbury to shut down Amari Cooper again, or at least nullify his impact on the game. C.D. Lamb, the rookie, who's been doing really well for himself, had, you know, he was their leading receiver week five, and he ultimately won the war between himself and Darnay Holmes, our rookie slot cornerback. Here's the thing. Darnay Holmes is a much better slot cornerback in week 17 than he was in week 5. I fully expect Darnay to get, you know, his punches in to get his few battles won during this game. Whether or not CeeDee Lamb still comes out on top remains yet to be seen. But guess what? Even if he does, that shouldn't matter because the most important cornerback wide receiver battle this game is going to be Michael Gallup versus Isaac Yadam. Because last, you know, last time we faced the Cowboys, when CeeDee Lamb led them in receiving, he wasn't the one that beat us. The one that beat us down the stretch in the final two minutes of the game was Michael Gallup roasting and toasting Ryan Lewis. Thankfully, Ryan Lewis is not going to be the one back there. It's going to be an Isaac Yadam who has been improving since week eight. And Isaac Yadam, who's definitely been taking tips from, uh, you know, from Bradbury in terms of swatting down the football, turning his head in time and learning how to keep, you know, track of his receivers. He's still not great, but thank God he's going to be matched up against the number three. But this is a number three that plays like a number two you know Michael Gallup is no slouch and I if I'm be honest with you guys I expect Gallup to beat um Isaac Yadam a lot what I'm asking for is that Yadam just you know he's there in the most important moments I'm asking for you know don't be a Ryan Lewis down the stretch of the game but that's gonna be the most important guy to look out for here and Andy Dalton who had his debut against us because that um Dak Prescott got injured against us we're gonna have to make him uncomfortable well, Dalton is a good quarterback, all right, but he's not a great quarterback. He's a good one. You know what I'm saying? The Dallas passing offense has still managed to be one of the top in the league. You know, it's number 16 right now with Dalton in there. Guess what? This 10th overall defense, which has not performed like, you know, a top 10 defense in the past couple weeks, they're going to need to get pressure and make him uncomfortable because the Dallas offensive line has struggled this year. And if we make Andy Dalton uncomfortable, he's not a mobile guy. He's a pocket quarterback. And he's not a great quarterback. He's a good quarterback. There's a reason that Cincinnati said, Dalton, it's been nice, but we're going to let you go. We're going to draft our rookie quarterback. And now he's a backup in the league. There is a reason for that. He's one of the best backups in the league, but we could still take advantage of that. And I don't want to see this man passing all over us with all day in the pocket, making hot dogs and reading a book and taking a nap. I want to see pressure on him. And this Giants defense, which was at one point top 10 in sacks, you know what I'm saying? At one point, you know, one of the best in terms of pressures uh, is dropped off in the past couple of weeks. It is nowhere near top 10 in sacks anymore. In terms of pressures, it's, you know, on the very edge of that. We need to get back to that. We need to get pressure. That means Leonard Williams show up. 
Leonard Williams, you've been missing these past three weeks, man. You want 20 mil plus? There's a reason I didn't want to give you 20 mil plus. Guess what? Perform like a $20 million player this week 17. Then maybe we'll talk. Leonard Williams needs to get some sacks. Dexter Lawrence needs to get some pressure. Our edge guys, man. Kyler Fackrell, I don't know if he's actually going to be back this game. He was supposed to be back last week. If you come back, last time Kyler Fackrell was there against the Cowboys, guess what? We got a pick six from him. Let's not forget, our defense got us some points. Kyler Fackrell, the pick six on Dak Prescott. Now, I'm not asking you to get a pick six because that was honestly probably a once-in-a-lifetime play. It was amazing to see that. What I am asking is just for some good pressure off the edge. Cam Brown, Carr Coughlin, that goes to you guys as well. Everybody's going to need to play really, really hard this game, man. Really hard this game. And the Giants' passing defense has improved tremendously. We're 16th overall in the league. And our secondary is healthy once again. We have the three best cornerbacks in our locker room back there healthy. I already listed them off. We have Jabril Peppers and Logan Ryan back there healthy. Ryan, bro, Logan, we just gave you a Christmas extension. We just extended you until you're 32. That rhyme, don't hate the player, hit the game bars. Do your job. Logan Ryan, I'm going to need you to be lurking. I'm going to need you to be looking at Andy Dalton's eyes and get a pick or two or a pass breakup or two. Live up to that contract. This passing defense has really improved, and we all know our rushing defense has been it has been elite all year. I'll say that, man. We've gone up against some tough rushing teams. You know, a couple of them have beat us, but we, for the most part, we've taken care of our job. You know, 11th in the league right now. Ezekiel Elliott has not been, you know, this hasn't been his best year in the NFL. So I have faith. Listen, if we could take care of the Cleveland Browns rushing offense with Nick Chubb, and Kareem Hunt. I think we could take care of the Dallas Cowboys rushing offense with Ezekiel Elliott and Tony Pollard. And you know what? I know we can do it. So if we don't do it, that means we messed up. Straight up. We are a better rushing defense to this rushing offense. There's no reason Ezekiel Elliott should be going off against us. That defensive line should be holding its own. Now, where the problem is going to be is once again going back to the edge. We failed at containing the edge these past three weeks in our past three losses. Hey, that's going back to Kyle Fackrell. That's going back to, you know, to Cam Brown, Carter Coughlin. Guys, do your job, right? And guess what? We don't need to spy this game. One of the reasons we failed to contain the edge is because we always had a spy on that mobile quarterback. Andy Dolan's a pocket passer. I fully expect this to be okay. Blake Martinez. Ooh, Blake Martinez. Listen, bro. This is going to be a nice matchup for you against Ezekiel Elliott. A nice matchup for you against Dalton. Maybe you come down on a middle linebacker blitz every now and then. Get a, you know what I'm saying, get a sack. I'm going to need you to be on the top-notch game for your pass defense. And whoever's next to him, whether it's Tay Crowder or David Mayo. I, I want it to be Tay Crowder. Sometimes it's um guy the guy we got from Minnesota whose name is completely slipping my mind right now. He's wearing number 52. My apologies there. But they're going to need to have a good game as well. And Tay Crowder, he debuted against Dallas. He almost got a pick. So Tay Crowder, do your job next to next to Blake Martinez, man. I expect We have a good middle linebacking court, all right? We don't have a great loan, but we have a good one. That's another reason why I expect us to contain, to contain the run. It's really going to be in the passing game, which once again isn't a surprise. That could beat us, but we should do our job. This is Andy Dalton. This is not Dak Prescott. Get pressure on him. Make him feel uncomfortable. Close up the passing lanes a little bit. Make, him, make those receivers have to work to get open. Make them take a little extra second or two to get open. And that way, Dalton, he gets a little uncomfortable. And we get the better of him. This is a very winnable game. It is not as easy as it looked a couple weeks ago. And that's not because the Dallas Cowboys have looked better and they have looked better. It's because the New York Giants have not been doing their job. And they need to get back to doing their job if they want to win this game. I'm going to say, and I hope this comes true, the Giants win and beat the Cowboys 21-17. to I hope to God that comes through. Um, that's what I got for you all today. Like, share, subscribe. I'm out. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. I'll catch you all in the next one.